This is the third and final part in the series where we discuss the mechanical consultant's design of the building management system. In part one, we spoke about design and construct, where a lot of the things that the mechanical consultant isn't doing that creates pain for us are things that the mechanical consultant isn't supposed to do and they're things that we should be doing in the design and construct model. The second series, we spoke about why does the mechanical consultant choose the lowest price, which is usually the wrong price, and as we discussed, they don't choose the wrong price. And in today's video, this third and final part, we're going to wrap up three things that I think are really important that you should consider that you might be a little bit more forgiving of the mechanical consultant when we're busy giving them a hard time. So the first point is the tender phase for consulting services. This is where the consultants are tendering to win the job and their fee has been evaluated by somebody else, the owner or the developer or the architect, whoever it is. So they have the exact same lowest price wins issue that BMS companies have. So just like with BMS companies where you're, you're, you're all trying to strip things out of your project, you're removing things and removing things to try to get your price lower and lower and lower because the lowest price wins, consultants have the exact same problem. They are also removing things from their estimate, taking things out to try and be more competitive because they are also being gauged on or selected against the lowest price. So in the BMS industry, sometimes where you might have you know, two or three global manufacturers tendering for a BMS project with a small local BMS company, of course the pricing is going to be different. The manufacturer will be higher, of course. Um, they have bigger overheads and blah, blah, blah. So the manufacturers over the years have also been trying to become more efficient and removing things um, to try and lower their price. The same thing happens in consulting land. The big tier one global organizations, they are often pitched against and tender with local, smaller consulting services, which obviously also have lower prices. So the consultants are also lowering their price to try and be more effective to get a, a lower price because they're also having the same issue as the lowest price wins. So how many times has it happened to you as a BMS designer where you need 10 network switches to do a really great network design, but your salesperson in the estimate is only allowed for five network switches? And the reason why that might be, other than they made a mistake, it might also be because if they had 10 network switches in, they may not have won the job, they'd been too expensive. So in your company, the BMS company, your salespeople are finding ways to strip stuff out of their, out of their estimates so their price is more competitive and they're more competitive to compete against the lowest price. The consultant is doing the same thing. They're stripping things out to try and be more competitive. So just like you only had five network switches instead of 10, that mechanical engineer that's starting the job, they might not actually have enough hours in their project to do an amazing design as well. They're going to do the best they can with the amount of hours that they've got available to them. The next point is that mechanical consultants are not very good at BMS. Sorry, mechanical guys, I know you watch these videos. I like you guys. But it's not your fault, right? It's not the mechanical engineer's fault that they're not BMS specialists. We don't see electrical engineers designing hydraulic systems. We don't have that. So it should be electrical designing electrical, mechanical designing mechanical, hydraulics designing hydraulics, BMS designing BMS. It's not the mechanical engineer's fault that he has to design a system that they're not a specialist in. It's not their fault actually. Now, it might have been okay 50 years ago when our control systems were mainly pneumatics, you know, relays, thermostats, um, you know, simple like interlocking logic. In those days, it probably made sense for the building's control system to sit under mechanical because it was a reasonably simple thing. We didn't have all this complication we have now. But for some reason, over the last 50 years, the industry hasn't evolved that the BMS has gotten so complicated that it should really be designed by you know, BMS specialist consultants. It hasn't got to that point. 
But essentially, although that's not really acceptable, it's not good enough, it's not really the mechanical engineer's fault or the mechanical consultancy's fault. That's just how the industry is. They, they do the best that they can. It's not their specialist industry. We should just be a little bit more forgiving of that. So my third and final point is that the BMS is not high on the priority list of the mechanical consultant. Now that sounds terrible, doesn't it? But let me ask you a question, right? So you BMS engineers, project managers, how many of you are very bored at work? How many of you in a 40 hour week have about 30 hours worth of work to do? And about 10 hours a week, you're just on social media, washing your car, you know, going to the beach. How many of you BMS engineers have that job where you sort of, you look at your watch and think, oh my gosh, I've got still got two hours to go. This, this day just never ends. Do you have those days? No, you don't. And mechanical consultants don't have those days either. They are very, very busy drowning in mechanical work. So... If today's Monday and Friday is the day the mechanical specification goes out to tender, they've got five days and they've got two weeks of work to do in that. Remember, mechanical engineers are human just like us. They have the same type of constraints that we have around workload. So is the mechanical engineer going to spend a day working on the BMS but not get the chorter schematic finished and it goes out to tender half done? Or are they going to focus on getting the mechanical schematics and the equipment schedules and the, the scoping for mechanical button down to go out to tender on Friday? Like, of course, they're not going to do the BMS. It's low down their priorities. I've seen it with my own eyes in the office with these guys and girls, and they're under the pump. They're doing everything they can. They're, they're getting to work early, they're working late nights, they're working weekends to try to get the mechanical design done to go out the door. The BMS, it's just not on their radar. And although that is not at all acceptable, I'm not presenting it as an excuse to say it's acceptable, that's just the, re the reality of it. The BMS has become so complicated over the last 20, 30 years that that structure hasn't changed. Those mechanical engineers, they don't, like think to themselves, you know, I stuff these BMS guys. I'm, I'm just going to ignore 50 pages of BMS scope in my 450 page mechanical specification. <laughs> it's going to be hell for them. They don't think that. They want to do a good job. They just don't have the time to do it because they've got a big piece of work that they're focusing on. So the BMS scope of work is not a high priority for mechanical engineers, not because they're bad people. It's because they've got 120% of work to do to get their own work done. So that wraps that series up. Three days. I thought I could do it in one, but it was too much. Three series is, at the end of all of this, like I said in the very first video, you're not going to, if you if you really like think about all these things we've spoken about, it doesn't solve the problem. You still have the exact same problems. Your life's not any easier. But we can't just continue with blinkers on and just plowing through and doing what we normally do and sending off RFRs and just waiting and waiting and waiting. We, you have to consider that the mechanical engineer, for all these reasons we've spoken about, is not going to do what you need them to do. You need to do that, especially because it's designer and construct and you have contractual responsibility to do a big piece of the design that the mechanical consultants used to do in the olden days.